What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight's... Tonight! Okay, we're coming back to the ocean. Yes, indeed. The ocean fans feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. Okay, this is a request from Mark Deccan, and this is actually Mark's prioritized request for the month of December for being a silver tier member on the Patreon page. So, here you go, Mark. I hope you enjoy the show, man. Uh, Mark wanted to see me react to this song by the ocean called, I hope I pronounced this right, Devonian Nascent. Um, have I heard this song before? No. <laughs> no. Look, I think I would know if I heard a song called Devonian. I think that would stick with me you know what i mean i think that would resonate with me a little bit so i am very sure i've never heard this song before however there's always a chance i may have heard the song in passing and i just don't realize it so as always if i start listening to the song and i suddenly go wait a second i've heard this song before i'll let you know that's the truth you know me i'm gonna be honest with you guys this was posted by Metal Blade Records, okay? And the video has 189,759 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What are you saying? You ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. The Ocean, Devonian Nascent, official. Official music video, official release, official audio. What's official here? I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Okay, 11.05, it's a long song. Well, you know how I feel about long songs. I am tougher on them, absolutely. Um, I have my reasons, and if you ever want to know what my reasons are, I'm going to actually make a Q&A about that, believe it or not, because I've had, I've had a number of people ask me that question, you know, why are you tougher on longer songs? I'm going to make a Q&A video, and I think it'll explain why I'm tougher on longer songs, so make sure you check it out. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. Thank you. 
wondering if this song was just going to go along this pace for the entire song. Glad to see it's not. Um, that was a long intro. Not going to lie. Uh, it, it, it went on for quite a bit. It really did. It, uh, I mean, it wasn't unpleasant. It, it, there was some interesting things happening in there. Like, there was a lot of sustain carryover that would carry over into the next chord that would end up, because of the carryover into the next chord, would end up creating some pretty unique chords. Like, I heard some sevens being in there, uh, some nines, uh, a couple of fives and sixes transitioning. Um it was interesting. It, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting enough to keep my attention without putting me to sleep, you know, but I'm also not going to lie. It, if it had kept going, it probably would have put me to sleep. I'm glad to hear some drums kick in. And I believe right before I hit the pause button, I believe I heard some vocals. So that's good. It looks like we're getting into the actual meat of the song. Now that's a good thing. Let's keep going here. Okay, so they did a really good job in the verses building up to what I believe to be the chorus. And then the chorus continued to build. And then they came down from the end of the chorus back down uh, to where they started uh, prior to the uh, verse kicking in. That's a good way to go. As we, we talk about building up the song and building it up. You can only build it so far, you know. And then you have to make a decision of what you're going to do next. Are you going to drop it down? Or are you going to continue to build and hope to God that you have enough room to build before it gets too far gone? You know what I mean? Um, they decided instead to drop it back down again. A much simpler approach, a much simpler way, an easier way, and gives you more options later on building up again. So... I mean, if they wanted, they could just, you know, stay down the whole time and then shoot right back up to where they were if they wanted to. But I have a feeling they won't. I have a feeling they'll they'll grow slow and steady like they did before. Um, some good chordal progressions in there. Some interesting ones. Um, one that really caught my ear was in about halfway through, I believe, is the chorus. I heard the flat two to the minor three to the flat two to the one. Um, I've always loved that progression. I always have. I don't know why, but every time 
every time a band does it and I hear it, it sticks to me. And I'm just like, ah, there it is again. It's one of those, everybody has those riffs that they just internalize and they love. You know, they, they, it doesn't matter what band is playing. If that band does that riff, everybody latches onto it. One of the biggest riffs, one of the most popular riffs of all time, uh, <laughs> B minor to G minor to D major to A major to B minor. I think it is. Ba -da -da -da. Or maybe it's A minor. Never mind. B minor, G minor, D. It, is it D major? I believe it's D major to A minor to B minor. Um, there are so many songs that have used that riff. It's incredible how many bands have used that riff. But, uh, I mean, I've been in bands where we've used that riff. But it's, it's recognizable. It's one of those riffs that everybody recognizes. Maybe not because of the song that they're particularly listening to, but because another song that they really like uses that riff. It's one of those riffs that everybody internalizes. And for me, one of the riffs that I internalized was 1 to flat 2 to flat 3 to flat 2 to 1. I, it's, I've always loved that riff. I don't know why. I just I always have. So Anyway, uh, let, let's keep going here. Time out, time out. I think this might be my favorite part of the song so far. Uh, they got that one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And they got those accents on the one and two and. So it's on the one, the downbeat of one and the and of two. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and it's very hard, very impactful on those uh, subdivisions. Let me back up. Nope! No, nope, I don't care. Hey, look, it's my show. If I want to back up, we're going to back up. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. We're going to back up anyway, and we're going to listen to that part again, because I dug it. I absolutely dug it.
Okay. Whoa. Are we doing a key change? We may have a key change. Okay, we're, we're going to get to that in a second. So the pattern, it, it's a four-bar phrase, right? One and two and three and four and. That's the first bar. Now, the second bar is one and two. So the downbeat shifts from the end of two to the downbeat of two for that one measure only. So you put those two measures together, it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So only on the second measure is that little variation. They literally move the 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 uh, the accent back to the downbeat instead of the upbeat. Just on the second measure. That's cool. Kind of threw me for a loop a little bit the first couple of times, but once I found it, I locked in the pattern. I got it. It was it was not that difficult, but it's very cool. Again, one of those things where it's really not that difficult to do. It, it's really not that hard to figure out either. I mean, I just I just figured it out here, but I would never have thought of it in a million years. I just I wouldn't have. So you got to give credit to the songwriters for having the vision and having the creativity to do it and make it work and make it sound really cool. That's so far. I think that's my favorite part of the song. Now we still got another four minutes to go. Maybe something else will impress me more. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, it sounds like we're gonna have a key change here. So we're in B. Um, dun, 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 bass is carrying this part, man. Bass is absolutely carrying this part. <laughs> Okay, it sounds like we're going back into the main key again. Um, so that entire, for let's call it a bridge, okay? We had a key change, went down, the feel changed slightly, um, the pattern changed quite a bit. Um, I dug that whole section. I know it was like two minutes long, I don't care. That whole section was really good. Um, 
I loved how instrumentally bass was carrying the song, carrying the riff. Uh, guitar, and I believe it's keyboard, coming in with the bass, hitting those runs, accented by the drums, but when the run was over, the drums would fill into the next run. And whenever the run would start, drummer was be playing the drummer was playing in sync synchronized uh drum pattern with what was happening melodically but as soon as it happened as soon as that little run ended he would fill into the next run do the run fill into the next run do the run fill into the next run really smart on the drummer's part to do that it's it was a great way to eliminate dead space. You know what I mean? Because otherwise we would have had just, we would have had just had bass probably just keeping on the root. Dun 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 you know, doing that. That same pattern. And nothing wrong with it, but by having the drums fill in there uh on the after those runs, it was nice because it helped break up the monotony of what was happening. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love bass, but at the same time, you know, shows got to continue. You know, we, we got to move on to the next part. You know what I'm saying? So the drums definitely helped with that. Uh, I believe we're getting back into the main riff, which I'm glad to see. I, I'm glad we didn't end with the bridge. So let's continue. I was wondering how they were going to end it. Now they ended it well. I was I was wondering if maybe they were going to swell up and then just cut it, or you know, if they were going to fade out completely, or if they were going to go back into the riff again and like continue to fade while doing the riff. You know, there's a lot of ways you could end. I think the way they ended here was actually probably the best way. Um, it was really good. Let me think about it. Um, let me come up with a score and I'll see you in the review. We'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was The Ocean with Devonian Nascent. Uh, this was a request from Mark Deccan, and this was actually Mark's prioritized request for the month of December for being a silver tier member on the Patreon page. So, there you go, Mark. I hope you enjoyed the show, man. Um, I thought about it, and uh, I came up with the score, and I hope the score is appropriate. <laughs> I know I did another song from the ocean, uh, and it was like, I don't know if it was, I know that's all connected, all the songs are connected, I just, I don't know if it was 
I don't know if this song is before or after that part. I, I'm not sure, but um, nonetheless, I I do remember the other song. I don't remember the name of it, unfortunately, but I do remember it uh, pretty well. And uh, I have a score here. I, I, I think I think I scored it properly. I hope I did. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I am going to give this a 7.8. Yep. 7.8. I feel great about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay. First of all, I hope I scored this correctly because I hope I gave the other song a higher score than this one. I hope I gave it like an 8.2 or an 8.3, somewhere in there. I, I hope I did because I feel like the other song was better than this one, if I'm being honest here. All that is not to say that this is a bad song. I just think the other song was great. This song was really good. You know, I, I, I really believe that. Um, the song did go on a bit. Uh, it, it did kind of draw on a little bit long for my taste. Uh, there was some parts where it was like, okay, like, like, like I'm gonna use a perfect example, the intro. I was like, okay, let's move along. Come on, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and, uh, they could have cut that in half. I think it would have been okay, you know? Um, other than that, though, like, nothing about the song was bad. You know, nothing was bad. The the progression of the song, first of all, the entire song, I think when I think when impressed, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let, let's talk about the simple stuff first, okay? Let, let's talk about the chordal structure. Chordal structure of the song, very easy very very simple to follow it is not difficult at all to figure this out this is a pretty simple song okay um having said that it is very well put together everything lined up everything made sense from chord to chord there was no there was nothing in the chordal pattern and the chordal flow that made you scratch your head and go why you know nothing sounded dissonant nothing sounded out of place everything sounded like it belonged where it should be and that's not always easy to do i know a lot of people take that for granted but try writing a song sometime you know try writing a song like this sometime and see just how easy it is to make all the pieces line up exactly and how the chords transition from each to the to, from each chord to each chord um i was talking earlier about uh riffs and there are certain riffs that stick with you right and I used the, the old BGDA riff, th that old riff. I use that as an example. Everybody has heard a song that has that riff in it. Everybody has. There's not a single person who has not heard a song that does not have that BGDA riff in it. Okay, everyone has. Now, whether that riff rings the bell with you, whether that riff sticks with you is a whole nother issue. Sometimes that riff just grabs onto people and holds on and does not let go. You know, they just, it will not let go for anything and it, it captures that person. And every time that that same person will hear that riff, doesn't have to be in that same song, it could be in any song, but every time that person hears that BGDA riff, they are immediately reminded of that song. You see what I'm saying? The song that got them. Um, so it, for me, one of those biggest riffs are whenever you have the root to the flat two to the flat three back to the flat two to the one da, 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 da. yeah that that riff love that riff i absolutely do uh i don't know why it's so dissonant but i love it another thing i really liked about the song was the fact that it did go down to a bridge where it actually did change key and that was really cool i love the fact that they were able to modulate down uh to b of all things which is really cool um I, I dug that it sounded deep it sounded dark it sounded menacing i absolutely loved it i love the feel change that happened there it just the mood completely changed in the song when that happened um it was very impactful really enjoyed it um and then of course it went back up into the main riff again to end out which was very very smart uh, if they had ended with the bridge, I don't know if the sound of the song would have sold as well as it did. 
uh, I don't think you would have sold the audience as well if it had stayed down the bridge and ended down there in the bridge. I don't think it would have stuck out. I, I don't think it would have uh, sold as well. I'm glad they went back up into the main riff. What sold me the most on this song, though, it wasn't the chordal structure. It was actually the use of subdivisions and accents. The song never changed from 4-4. Not once. It stayed in 4-4 the entire song. Uh, no deviations whatsoever. Yet, through the use of subdivisions and accents, and those synchronized accents within those unique subdivisions, they were able to change the feel of the song on the fly, like rapid succession, whenever they wanted, simply because they were accenting on the subdivisions, like on the and of two. Like, there was that one section where it, it was... One and two and three and four and 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 that that four measure phrase I was telling you guys about earlier. Just by changing one accent, moving it from the end of two to the downbeat of two. We're talking about an eighth note. That's all we're talking about, an eighth note difference. They were able to completely change that entire four bar phrase so it wasn't one and two and three and four in every single measure you know if that had happened if they had had that same pattern the whole time you know the, the one and two and three and four if they had done that same four uh that that same pattern all four measures on every single phrase i think i would have lost my mind i think it would have been out of my mind bored i am so glad that they mixed it up and put the accent on the downbeat of two on that one measure, the second measure of each four bar phrase. I am so glad they did because it brought something fresh and new. Even when I locked into it, even when I figured it out and I was locked in and I was able to anticipate when it was coming next, it still felt good because there was that slight difference. And making those little changes in the rhythmic pattern by not changing the time signature, but just by changing the subdivisions and the accents on those subdivisions, they were able to completely change the rhythmic feel of the song. A very deceptive way of doing it, a very sneaky way of doing it, but a very effective way and smart way to do it too, because that makes counting the song simple, because you're staying in 4-4 the whole time, despite the fact it doesn't always sound like 4-4 because of the way they did break up using the using the accents and the subdivisions. So it was brilliant. I loved that part. Um, I love that aspect of it. It still gained the 7.8. Uh, I did like the other song better, and I got to be fair here. Uh, this song I did not feel was as impressive as the other song from The Ocean. Um, I, I did I did like this song. Don't get me wrong. I did like the song. Would I listen to this song again? If the mood struck me, yeah. I mean, it's a good listen. It's one of those songs you can listen to in the background. Like if you're working on something. Like if you're working on a project, you're working on a paper, or you know, you're working on, I don't know, some got uh, some uh, coding for for, for uh, computer programming. Something like that, something to play in the background to keep, you know, your, your, the right side, your, no, sorry, the right side, the left side of your brain uh, occupied while the right side can focus on the work. You know what I mean? So, it's a good song. It's a really good song. Would I call it great? No, but it's a really good song nonetheless, and that's why it's getting the 7.8. So, 7.8, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hopefully, you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It'll do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. 
Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.